In this video, I'll teach you how to create a full page form in Flowdesk. This is really useful if you don't have a website yet, because that way you can send people to this form from anywhere, your social media, your emails, and basically anywhere. You, you get a URL, you can send them there. And by having this, you can start building your email list. <laughs> Hello, internet people. My name is Robert, and I help creators with the technical side of the business. And this is the sixth lesson in my complete Flowdesk course. To see the, the, the whole course, click on this video, banner here and you will be taken to the YouTube playlist with all the lessons. But let's start with this one now. So by the way, if you just joined this course, you can get the 50% discount on the first year if you use my promo code tips with punch all together and in capitals. So okay, if you don't have a website, uh, let's create a form for that. Okay, let's go to forms. And again, new form. And in this case, you can choose if you want to link in bio, if that makes more sense, if the designs fit your needs more. These are kind of new. You can see they just added them uh, recently. And this is a great addition, especially if you just want a, a link hub. Or then you can go with more traditional full page, uh, kind of a sign up page. They look like this. So from here, again, you just pick the one you like. Let's say I like this colorful one. Let's customize it. Again, you need to identify which segment the people become. So let's say this is interested in websites. So I'm gonna actually promote something with the websites. This is the Flowdesk editor and it works exactly the same way. It doesn't matter if you're using it for emails or different types of forms, they're all the same. On here on the left, it's, you see everything visually, you can change the text and so on. And on the right, you have the settings. So for example, if I click on the background somewhere here, I can now set the preferences here. So for example, I could enable this preferences you see it appears here, but I don't really need it. Same thing, I can en enable showing the image on mobile. And if you need to see your uh, your form in mobile, you just click on that icon and you see this is how it looks like. This is the image right now. Uh, I haven't filled it in. So here again, if I click on the back background, I could also change the background color. There's a lot of options here and you can also provide your own hex number from here. And for messages, this is quite important. Once somebody submits their email, this is what they would see. So thank you for subscribing, but you could have something casual or even you can have some custom text here. So you type in your own text here, but I'll keep it to the friendly one. Then if you click on the image, you can actually upload an image or change it if there's already an image. So let me upload from here. And same thing would work with the text. I could just uh, start typing here anything and it will appear immediately. I'll just keep the text they already have here. Then you can adjust the subtext. And if you don't want to ask for the first name, you could remove it from here. So for example, here you see edit option first name. I could, first of all, I can just rename it or I can just disable it completely from here. I can just delete it or I can make it a required field. For this form, I don't need the first name. So let's say I want to delete it. This is how it is. I'm going to just click on undo because actually, uh, to think of it, it's better to ask for the first name. So then you can adjust the font names and style of the input fields. And then if you click on the button from here, you can adjust the button uh, styling. Now, this is quite all standard. You can just adjust things here. But where it gets interesting is once you start going here. So if you click on next, you'll notice there is a new type of question. So I already mentioned in the other lessons, double opt-in is better to enable when you already established. For now, I would just keep it uh, as disabled um, just because it's easier to build your uh, your email list that way. Then it's asking if you want to if you want to get notified when somebody signs up. For me, this is not necessary. So I'm going to just choose do not notify me. And then after this form submitted, what, what, do, what do we do? Display success message, which I already showed you, or we can redirect them to another URL. I'm just going to keep it to display success message. Okay, and now the last step is to grab this code. And now we have a page where uh, people can just come in. So you can share this URL anywhere you want. And this is what people will see. They land on this page and they can just sign up to your email newsletter. I don't know if you noticed, but this ending is quite ugly. I would never remember this. You can adjust it if you come here and customize the link. You can adjust the ending. So for example, you could say here, we can adjust it. Let's edit it and say, newsletter or something and then save it if you want to change this handle then you would need to do it in the account section i, I kind of go through it in the one of the lessons earlier lessons i think it was lesson two or three 
and that's about it. Now, unfortunately, right now you cannot have a custom domain name with your full page. So you're stuck with a Flowdesk URL like this one here. But I think at some point Flowdesk will add this feature. But in the next lesson, which you can watch by clicking on uh, this banner right here, we will look at the interesting alternative to full page forms. And uh, that's, that's a link in bio pages, which are like mini link hubs with all your most important links in one place. And you can also gather uh, email subscribers there.